are going to talk about Art on Four. They've been, uh, they have more than 35 years of implant uh, experience between them, have placed over 10,000 implants. Both Victor and Eugene have worked in multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary practices and have first hand experience of the advantages of working with a team approach. Uh, they believe in interaction with their colleagues and the best way to improve solutions and results in, is keystone to dentistry. They've been looking forward to sharing these key, key note points in their presentation to Bard. I give you Dr. Eugene Marius and Dr. Victor Kubler. Good afternoon. I'd just like to help Dr. Algrafi out there. Um, in fact, we have got the graveyard squared shift this afternoon, so on a point of order. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Toft and President Tipton for inviting us here. Um, this is a landmark event for us. It's the first time that my great friend Victor and I are presenting together. So uh, it's a pioneering event, but it's also pioneering for you because we're going to show you something today which I don't think you've seen in the UK before. So um, without further ado, let's get started. I think um, one of the things we've heard today, we've heard a few concepts, old concepts like dentures, which were very eloquently explained by, by Kevin and teeth whitening by Linda. Um, and these, these are all concepts that have been around a while, but having a new slant on them is something that, that, that is actually of value to us. Um, looking at, at our topic today, which is immediate load, we all know that's been around a long while. And the paradigm shift that we're going to be talking today is hopefully something that will be of value to, to you in your practices. Um, historically, uh, Paul, Dr. Tipton and I have been visiting various courses over the years. We attended the Maolo Clinic in Lisbon a number of years ago where we learned all the nuances about the all on four system and also the, the benefits and the disadvantages of the system. A few years ago we went as guests of Biomed 3i to Milan where we learned about the carbon fiber bridge. So the concept of immediate load is not something that's, that's, that's new to us. But certainly, we're looking for, for, for things that are going to make things easier for us. The theme today with all, with, with all our speakers was quite, quite poignant. The, the same sort of ideas come out. What are we looking for? We're looking for something that's predictable. We're looking for something that's not going to create any litigation for us. Uh, we're looking for an aesthetic guideline, uh, something that's very affordable. And those are the parameters that, that all disciplines in dentistry nowadays are, are really looking forward to. So with that in mind, we'd like to discuss this simple definitive art on four technique that we're going to launch in the UK today. Um, just. So looking at all the topics that we've, that we've heard about today, they, the basic requirements of our system is that we'd like something that's going to be permanent, that's going to be adaptable, repairable, and has surgical ease for the doctor who's placing the implants, and then sim similarly for the, for the restoring dentist, the prosthodontist, who in this case, uh, Dr. Gubillo is going to be fitting this today, it should be So from a surgical ease point of view, I think um, the, the, the point that we're going to make today is that um, we're looking for an implant that we can load immediately, that can take the stresses immediately and be used as such. We're going to use some adjuncts in our, in our procedure which will make life easier for the patient to speed up healing, uh, post-operative recovery and allow us things like um, grafting, where in this case we may use uh, the, the, the patient's own teeth with the, with the use of a dentine grinder to, to add bone, and in cases where we want to do uh, parallel implants, 
and we do sinus elevations, we can actually use the teeth that we've, uh, that we've extracted as a source of autolog autologous graft. Um, obviously, for us to do the surgical aspects, we need to do our diagnosis correct, the use of CBCT scans to name but one, the usual uh, workup with, with our uh, study models, our, our stents, etc. So these are all the, the kind of planning that, that we're going into. The, the implant that we've used in this particular case is the uh, EZEM, which uh, is, a, is from a company called Biner. And um, I actually did a little review on this implant in the Implant Update magazine of this month. Uh, we've got a copy of it in your, in your folder, but you're welcome to look at it in, the, in that magazine. And of course, just a little plug for the implant as well, which you can have a look at the back to see uh, what it's all about. So the easy EM benefits are quite clear and very beneficial to the system that we're, that we're, that we're going to show you today. In terms of uh, the, the aspects of primary stability, we can, we can easily load it at day, at day one, as you'll see. Um, the, we're going to present a case today where we fitted our implants yesterday and uh, the patient is here. Our master technician, uh, Volker Samurai, has been hard at work to get the bridge done and, and we'll be seating that right before your very eyes in a few moments. Um, the good thing about the EZM and the Biner range is that we have a, a huge range of multi-unit abutments which can suit every angulation. So even if you do decide to go the non-grafting route and you need to do a, an angled implant, there are abutments and multi-units that allow you to angle your, 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 um, your implants. And of course, one of the biggest things that, that has come through today is also affordability. Um, we're looking, patients are, are um, very conscious nowadays in social media, etc., and, and in very much a, sh a shopping mode when it comes to uh, full arch restorations, etc. So we all know about dental tourism overseas and so on. Um, and, and of course, here in this country, we'd like to be able to offer an affordable, competitive solution. And this certainly is one of them. And certainly, if you'd like to find out more about that, I'd be happy to discuss that with you afterwards. So without further ado, we're going to show you the surgery that we did yesterday. Um, and then I'm going to put forward my dear friend and colleague, Victor, to discuss more the specifications of the system that we've got.
Well, good evening to everybody. Uh, I've Well, uh, after seeing what we did yesterday, uh, we just followed the protocol that we'll show you from now on. Uh, first of all, what was essential for us is to use some biomaterials that are, for me, in my opinion, the, the best we can use. We use Cometa Bio, which is the, the use of, dent of extracted teeth as a biomaterial for bone grafting. We use the uh, uh, palatal rich fibrin, PREF, APREF in this case and Nova Bone as a synthetic biomaterials. We only use synthetic or autologous bi biomaterials, and that's why I wouldn't like bits and pieces of an animal mixed with me for the rest of my life, so I guess my patients don't like it either. Okay. Uh, for the denting grinder, out of one tooth we can get out of one cc per root of a material. What we do is just extract the teeth and grind them Ster uh, sterilize it and use it again as grafting at the, at the very same moment, the very same surgery. If we can sterilize it or not, it depends what we want because it's actually a, an autologous material. It's actually really hard. Dentin's composition is nearly the same as the bones. It only changes the amount of hydroxapatite and collagen slightly. So its resorption um, task is very slow. So it will maintain the bone volume uh, for a long time. In cases like this one, uh, for example, in this case, we grafted not only the defect here the patient had, but as well in, in volume. We can see here quite a big defect in the upper jaw. The lower jaw, we didn't do anything till now. Okay. Sorry, the picture got uh, mixed. Uh, so we can see we, gra we did this in July uh, 2014. We grafted all the upper areas, as you can see here, the, the defects. And after two years, the bone level is as good as, day, as day one. It has no resorption at all, even in distal areas. So the, the bone is maintained, even though we did an immediate load of the four front implants, but we, uh, we loaded the back ones after six months, because the bone was not good enough. For this case, uh, we grafted as well, not only in volume, uh, the sockets as well, but mainly in volume. Even though we had enough bone volume, the reach was six millimeters uh, wide. Normally, with the nowadays protocols, you just play a 3.5 millimeter implant and that's it. It will work and it will last many years. We have no problem. But for my mouth, I would rather a nine millimeter reach rather than six, and it cost me just half an hour of grafting the patient's mouth. Also, the aesthetic we'll get is much better if we get a thick ridge, especially in the lower jaw, which is really hard to get the a denture to seal exactly with the gum and do the emergences. And here we can see another case with the effect of a year and a half. We grafted all the sockets up and down. Sorry to change the x-rays. Uh, so when we did it on July, uh, 2014, we grafted all the sockets. We did immediate load of both dentures. And we still have, after two years, after a year and a half, the uh, back areas especially, the, uh, the bone is in a great shape. And we have no recession at all of the, around the implants. So we okay. Another essential biomaterial we use is a PREF. Its main effect is not to make bone grow or make a gum thicker or do magic things. It's not magic, it's just it increases vascularization enormously. So the initial healing is absolutely perfect. You get less uh, inflammatory response, less pain. You see the healing, so it's a less risk of infection, less risk of uh, day sense. And these pictures were taken after 24 hours from the surgery, from that surgery. So we extracted all the teeth that the patient had remaining, placed implants, four implants in this case, and this is the effect after 24 hours. So it's the same as these two, these four. It's the same, we place four implants, okay, they're different ones, and the pictures are taken only 24 hours post-surgery. Patient had no pain, no swollen. This one, the upper one, has a little bit of hematoma under the tongue, 
but that's it. So patients actually will love you after this. I mean, they get a really serious surgery. We get no pain and no swelling the day after, and they can eat properly when we place the teeth in. So it's absolutely perfect. And I said it's not magic, it's just it helps healing. And not only the initial healing, the late healing will be improved as well. The, the, the more vascularization we get at the, at the surgery, the bone graft will mature in a shorter period of time. Okay. So for our, for our protocol, it's really important that the whole thing is really simple to follow and it's really easy for dentists and for technicians to, the, to, to work with. So we designed some impressions, sorry, got the wrong one. We designed some impression kit we'll see later on. But the main thing for the, for the Arton 4 is that we make a titanium framework from day one adapted to the implants, right, take an impression right after surgery. So from day one, all the implants are splint together and work as a unit, whatever the four, in the upper jaw, in the lower jaw. And this is because titanium has some micro flexibility, which allows the movement of the bone. I think we all know the mandible flexes when we eat and even when we're young. So the titanium allows you to do that. And the lathe healing is much better. Apart from the titanium, we use uh, teeth, uh, PMMA teeth and composite. We'll see it's, uh, the properties in a moment. So the aesthetic we get is better than the, with the acrylic. We can play with the emergences for the, for the gum part. For the impression, we did the protocol as simple as we could. So we designed a new transfers, new clips on, and we can, we can use a standard tray with a good impression material. So we all have those type of trays in the clinic. We just clip them on, as we saw in the video, take the impression, and the technician will have a perfect model to do the, the job. Even with six or eight implants, the impression is so accurate that the, the structure will fit perfectly on the day after. Okay, the lab technique will face the, the structure, it uses the composite, which is our hardest animal, and the tissue reproduction with the composite uh, color pink, as we see. The materials we use, we use normally are PMMA teeth, the titanium, and composite. As we said, the titanium is a uh, elastic module similar to bone. The PMMA teeth, they're filled with uh, nanoparticles of composite that makes them really hard and really steady. And the composite is actually the best material for restorations, and we do it daily in our clinic. So why not use it for full arches? It absorbs, it absorbs part of the chewing forces, so it reduces the stress on the bone around the implants. It reduces the stress, more importantly, on the TMJ, and it reduces the so-called perimplantitis. Okay? So we can see the difference now between what we did before we started to develop the Arden 4. We did a classic immediate load processes. We did the upper uh, ceramic uh, dentures. And on top of that, I mean, these two, the ceramic and the acrylic, they were really hard to repair or to change something. If there's an implant missing, a uh, failing, or uh, the gum bat had received, or even if a patient comes after three or four months or a year and demands a new static, it's impossible to change it with a ceramic. We can, we can tell the patient to, to pay for a new bridge, or if it cracks, and this will happen eventually, the uh, patient has to pay a new bridge. So it's really hard to repair. With, Artons, with the Arton 4, we can repair so the titanium structure and the composite part. We can realign the base of it because it will have, we will have recession. Even if we graft uh, the bone hugely, eventually we will have recession. We can have a lower recession task, but it will have. So we can add teeth, we can add composite on the, on the rebases. For this case, in particular, the patient came after two or three months. He said he cracked the tooth with a bottle, probably it was late at night, and it took us 20 minutes to repair it. 
and the cost of it was just a little bit of composite from our clinic. If this happens on a metal ceramic or a zircon ceramic uh, bridge, we just tell the patient to buy a new one. So the cost is really low. You can do it for free for the patient. You will have a really happy patient. In no minutes it's solved. And the thing is not getting from him another ceramic bridge. The thing is that he refers you more patients. If he's happy and the system works, then he will refer his neighbor or his aunt. The, the full structure is completely adaptable. If an implant fails, we can add it. And let's be serious, implants do fail. From time to time, even you do immediate load, even you do uh, refer, deferred load, implant will fail eventually, one here or there. So we can add implants, as we'll see now, like this case. This guy, we did a, an Ardon 4 in the upper jaw. After two months, we saw this implant on this area would fail. It was not uh, also integrating correctly. So we just extract the implant, cut the structure, and we left the patient with in a structure with three, loaded on only on three implants for six months. After six months, we replaced the implant and added the piece that was missing to the structure. So after three years, you can see the bone level for the rest, for the other three, is exactly the same as the first day. Here you can see actually the first x-ray from where we did the first surgery. Even though we changed one implant, the bone level is still exactly the same. And that's because the implants were split together from day one with a rigid structure. And it's not acrylic, it's not composite, it's not ceramic, it's not a huge CAD CAM uh, titanium bar. It's a design bar titan, titan bar, which is flexible enough, but it's hard enough, so implants do not move. But they do not suffer stress when we eat or when we press too much. Statically, with the composite, as we've seen today as well in a few lectures, uh, we can play with it. We can, nowadays, we can do whatever we want with composite. We can individualize the gum. We can do the, the frenulum. We can play with the emergence. And one of the great things for the art of force is that we can actually play with the emergence over time. We don't, we're not uh, struggle that what we do on day one, it's like it is forever. Eventually, he will have recession, and eventually, the, the little bit of swollen he will have in the gum, it will go down. So he will have gaps. We can add just composite and play with the emergence. So every time, the gum seals the gaps in between the denture and the, and the gum. And now, if you have a moment, uh, we will set in the, the work we did yesterday. We just saw the video of the surgery. So if you give us a moment. Get the patient, Eugene. Right. Yes. No, I'm hmm? At this point, uh, I'd just like to introduce our master technician, Volker Samurai, who had worked until midnight last night and was up at the crack of dawn to finish this bridge. Like normal. So, uh, <laughs> as always, Volker. Yeah. Gloves. So like Victor said, the, what I really love about the system is the fact that it is so adaptable and repairable. And coming, th coming through from the, the situation of um, from, from dental f implant failure, um, and also w if you need to graft, you know, not all people are going to use uh, four implants to restore an arch. You know, some people, when you look at the uh, when you do the diagnosis and you look at their age and their masticatory function and para function, it's possible that you may find that, that they need more than four implants to carry their occlusal load. And then, then it's a question of using maybe six or eight implants and you may not have enough bone at that stage. And that's one of the reasons why we like to use the, the, the 
use the teeth as the autologous graft. So we can actually place implants, we can do the sinus elevation and place the implants simultaneously. And we can leave those implants to heal until we're actually ready to place our, our um, to add onto our bridge and, and give the patient a full 12 or 14 unit bridge. Now, in, in my practice, I think that's very, very important. The, the fact that you never have to remake this procedure. It can be a, a fixed, definitive procedure. And with the composite structure that we're using, we can actually add on, we can add the pink gingiva in the recessive lesions uh, or areas. Um, like Victor said, if a tooth does break or chip, it's very, very easy to repair that right in the chair as soon as the problem arises. Now, the other thing, of course, is when you're looking at implant failure, on, on some of the systems where, um, you know, like uh, Carl Misch, my, my implant mentor said of all on four, which I respectfully just repeat, he says it's all on four and nothing on three. So um, this is one of those situations where um, if we do have a failure of an implant, we can remove we can section the, the titanium bar, place another implant, and restore that same bridge as soon as the implant has healed. So um, from, from, from a dentist's point of view, and especially from an overhead point of view, we are looking at, at saving ourselves a lot of time and effort and not annoying the lab technician to have to remake something at half price or you have to do something, replace it at no charge and, and just hope that the patient doesn't sue you because of, of a failure. And, and this does really make it a very, very easy and adaptable and repairable solution. You got it in place. Thank you. Very inside. Walker, that's uh, an exceptional job there. So, okay, thanks a lot. If you'd like to note, our patient had the the lower jaw done just a few weeks ago, and you can actually see the soft tissue healing. I think if we can get the camera on on the on the lower gums um, and underneath the bridge, um, you can actually see how how fantastic that, that healing post-operatively has occurred. Mm -hmm. And uh, just on a point of order, you'll also notice on top where, well, let's just grab that bottom one just so we can see what that post-op healing looks like. And then when we go to the top, yeah. and you have a look at the, the, the top right, ginger, right you can actually see that in terms of uh, the Can you get that? You can see how good those, those gums look. Just lift the gums slightly. And, and we're talking about 24 hours post-operatively. So using our, our PRF and, uh, and dentine um, as graft, that's fine. Um, you can see that, that for the patient, there's been really little or no inflammation. and uh, very little pain to, and certainly you you can ask him after the after the, after this presentation any questions you like. He's he is Spanish, but his English is pretty fluent. Thank you very much, Andres. You're welcome. Thank you.
At this point, I'd also like to uh, recognize the, the, um, the efforts of Input360, uh, who have done the video filming of, of everything. And uh, certainly, I can recommend their services in your practices for marketing and, and videoing treatments like that. It's OK? Yep, very Thank good. You. Thank you, Andres. OK, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I introduce myself. My name is Andres Torta. Uh, now you know, I am the person who was operated last 25th of April and for the second time yesterday. Okay. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Happy, happy. <laughs> As I have had the great opportunity to solve with the problem of my teeth, and I couldn't believe it that one day surgery could be so effective. After the first operation, it was amazing. I had no pain, minimal inflammation, only for three days. And two days later, I could eat slowly but perfectly. OK, I hope it will be the same after the second operation. At the moment, you can see there's no, no swelling, no, no pain, and I can speak very well. <laughs> For me, this is a dream come true, and I'm very, very glad. OK, then I, I would like to say thank you to Arte Dental Clinic, and especially to three persons. The manager, Ms. Tamaya Saez, a wonderful, friendly, and professional lady. Thank you so much, Amaya. Uh, my gratitude to uh, Dr. Victor Cubillo. A great professional, too. A person who I trusted in the first minute. And you know, he has magic in his fingers. <laughs> Mr. Gubillo, I cannot find words to say thanks. You're welcome. OK. Then also, uh, thanks to Mr. Volker Ranz, uh, Samurai, the architect of this work. He is our dental technician. <laughs> Mr. Sunray, Willem Dank, good to arbeit. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, thank you very much to the organization of this event and to all of you. OK? Then uh, I, I would like to give you a small gift. Yeah, it is my big smile with my new teeth. <laughs> thank you for your attention. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Thank you, Andres. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Now the awards are over. Okay. And now we're going to show you some few cases we've done over the years. This is one of our, our first cases. Actually, she's a very good looking woman, but as you can see in 2012, there's no way she could eat with those, uh, I don't know if I would call a dentist the one who did that, but uh, someone did. She had a ceramic all over, she couldn't eat. The smile, when, you, when I saw her first time, I said, okay, you got silicone in your lips, you know, tons of it. But after doing the surgery, placing the implants correctly, to a nice uh, denture, and at that time we didn't graft so much. We only grafted sockets and the defects, but not in volume. Then we realized she had no silicone in her lips. The smile was completely different, changed absolutely, and she's even more looking, better looking woman afterwards. This one was uh, one of her in the first years as well. She came in this state as periodontally, we would qualify this as a disaster, probably. I mean, uh, we didn't even do the, <laughs> the study of BPD, not, no. we just set a bomb inside and all of that. We placed the eight implants and the lady was really happy, as you can see afterwards. Okay. This was a really good case. Uh, she had uh, two dentures over with uh, telescopic crowns. We grafted with the, only with the 
two cannons on the upper one. Uh, we grafted the front uh, area of the, of the upper jaw. And we changed from the denture with the gum, uh, acrylic gum, to an iron fork with no gum at all. It was directly pressing the gum, playing with the emergences over the months. So the, her own gum made the papillas, and that was the best aesthetic we can achieve. I, I, you know, Folke is really good with the composite and with the characterization, but he'll never beat the gum. This patient, we will see in this one, uh, he came for a broken tooth. He said, hey, Victor, can you replace this tooth and put an implant there? Yeah, sure. So we just get it all out again. Okay? I mean, there's no point saving what's unsavable. And we did the, the lower one. We grafted quite a lot the lower jaw. And that's why we achieved a really low volume denture, really attached to the gum. So he has no gaps. The tongue feels no difference in between the gum and the teeth. I mean, the teeth are really natural shape. And he has no this, like in the upper one, this long uh, gingiva acrylic around. This is another case as well, same thing. This was a really heavy smoker. Even after the periodontal treatment, uh, the gum was pretty good. All the teeth were moving, and the, res the bone recession was really high. He had barely two, three millimeters of, of roots inside the bones. So we extract them all up and down, place the implants. In the lower one, we had to put some uh, gum composite to get it sealed, not to make the teeth look so longer. But in the upper one, we again achieved that the, her own, his own gum made the, the aesthetic part of it. For the lower one as well, and these are the, the hardest cases to achieve that the, the lower gum and bone seals completely the denture. You can see the volume. You can see where the implants are. And there's no composite or acrylic lingually to the implants. It's, we play with the emergences. So even after 24 hours, the gum starts to shape and to, to adapt to the, to the art of four, to the, to the denture. This one was a really hard patient because, not because of the state of the teeth, I've seen it worse, because this is a typical woman who is always smiling. She smiles all the time. You say hello, and she says hello, even with those teeth. So it was really hard to achieve quite an aesthetic result on her. But we grafted, I don't know, I think it's the case I grafted the most. So we grafted so much, we achieved the, the gum to be the volume so big. So we could place the teeth correctly. You can see the difference between before, the upper teeth, they're lining in the middle of the lower lip. And afterwards, the, the teeth are inside the mouth. They're not coming out. So she's really happy now. Now she smiles all the time as well, but at least she smiles happy. This was a really hard case, and we have a few like this we've done. And it's a really hard case because we changed completely his bite. We got the TMG going to centric, or at least I like to think that it was centric. And we changed completely, extract them all again. The vestibule of our uh, bone was gone. So we placed six implants in the, in the upper jaw, six in the lower, and we made it two hard and four. Again, Falker is a really massive with the static part and adapted to the gum. But the great advantage for this case is that the hard and four, it allows you to add and to uh, drill the composite and the teeth at our will. We can add whatever we want. We can drill whatever we want. So we can modify the occlusion on the way so the TMJ goes to its natural position. Because it's, for me at least, probably Dr. Tipton achieves it in two seconds. But for me, it's really hard to get the real eccentric position and final position only in one session. So over the next six months, we keep on relining, not relining, but readjusting the occlusion until we see that the TMJ is in a comfortable position. And it's hard to achieve, but on the other hand, it's really easy for me because we have a CVTC at the clinic, so we kind of 
make a CBTC of the TMG and make sure it's correct if it's in place, and that's it. But it allows you to play with the, with the, with the occlusion, and that's really important. That's impossible to do with a ceramic restoration. This case, again, patient came with two full dentures, and he was sick of them. Actually, he wanted to do both, but he couldn't afford it once even though it wasn't that much. So we did the upper one. <laughs> Come on. Oh, hey, we like surgery, but we're in for money, haven't we? So at least not to die poor. Uh, so we did the upper one, and as you can see, we adapted the lower denture to uh, get the correct vertical dimension and the correct occlusion. So in this case, we're still playing with the lower one, to achieve the best position for the TMJ. And even though we don't graph vertically, we don't need it. I mean, the static result with the patient smiles, it looks pretty natural. I mean, you wouldn't say that's composite. Nor. And to nearly finish up, uh, we have this case. We placed all the implants in the upper jaw. She had a, a partial removable denture. That implant on the 17, we couldn't load it. Bone was too soft, and we did a partial sinus lift. So we left it as it is. After six months, what we'll do is to add a new post on the denture, sold it, laser it to the structure, and with the same structure, not with a new denture, we add a new implant. And this happens more often than we think. I mean, we place four implants at the front that we can load, and we place two at the back with sinus lifts or in the post sinus area and we just load them afterwards. But we still have the very same structure that we had the same day. And this is the result we got with her. Just, just bits and pieces of uh, pink composite in between the teeth. But the grafting was so much, and the good management of the, of the gum, that the papillas start to form, to shape. And we can still, after six months or every year, screw it out clean it, polish it, add a little bit of composite where we need it, and keep the same aesthetic for as long as it lasts. The patient, of course. And now we'll leave you some with Dr. Marais to talk a little bit more. I think I've talked too much now. Thank you very much. <clears throat> right, so you've seen quite a, quite a lot today so far, um, and obviously, when, when we look at, our, at what we're offering our patient, we have to gauge what the patient benefits are with the treatment that we're doing. And certainly in my, in my experience and uh, having looked at, at the various immediate load systems, um, uh, I have to say that with, with regard to the system that I've been invited to become part of the team with, with Arton, uh, is definitely one that does offer a patient amazing benefits. So, the, in my view, I think the fact that the patient has only one prosthesis throughout the whole implant career that the patient may have, if you want to call it that, uh, I think that's quite significant, you know, because the patient gets used to it, it's adaptable, um, and, and, and the patient gets to wear one throughout his life. The augmented alveolar ridge that we, we talked about and showed does create a very much an aesthetic backdrop for the teeth. And I'm sure uh, Dr. Crawford Bain has a few, few things to say about uh, teeth being the curtain, which we'll hear tomorrow, I'm sure. But um, certainly in terms of uh, the aesthetics, which is another concept that kept coming through all our lectures today, uh, that's very important. And certainly in terms of where we're trying to regain tissue by adding bone, um, as opposed to certain systems where we actually have to do an aggressive alveoloplasty to get the, the lip line um, below the, the join of the prosthesis and, and, and the alveolar ridge, we're going the opposite way. We, we're giving the patient the best chance and the most aesthetic option in terms of the, the prosthesis. As, I, as I've just said, we, we're not interested in doing alveoloplasties. We want to try and keep the bone where it is. 
And I think that's another benefit for the patient, we, especially in terms of pa patients who are, are younger. You know, if you look at, at the classic all on four situation, um, you may have a patient in their late 30s or early 40s that, that needs a, a full arch restoration and decides to go uh, an immediate load route. Well, with the, with the classic all on four style, we've been used to removing that alveolar crest quite uh, vigorously and dramatically. Um, and and I, I, as, a, as a clinician, I'm not sure that, that I want to start a patient off um, on such a almost destructive route right from the start of their, of their um, um, implant sort of lifetime. The, the other thing that I alluded to earlier was the fact that we've got a great post-operative recovery. You saw Andres's gums that on the surgery that we performed yesterday and the surgery that was performed just over a month ago. So you can see that, that the benefits for the patients is really enormous. We're using autologous graft, which is uh, another good benefit, so there's no real host response. And, and that, again, is a, is a good benefit. Um, we've talked about repairs, so I'm not going to go back onto that, as well as additions. And also replacement of implants. So um, I spoke about that a little earlier, and I don't think we need to discuss that, but I'm happy to, to take the matter further um, if need be. Of course, the benefits for us um, is that we don't have to make another a prosthesis. In terms of cost, profits, and overhead, I think that, that this is probably, in my view, one of the, the best systems that, that I'm aware of uh, in terms of the fact that, once again, we only need to have one prosthesis. Uh, I don't have to make a follow-up final prosthesis. And, and I can, for the reasons I explained earlier, add, I can subtract, I can, I can repair, um, and I can alter the and adapt the, the processes. So, so the benefits to me are, are, qu are quite um, evident, really. So what does Arton Systems do? Uh, this is the, the, the time that I get to, to plug uh, the lovely team that I've, I've, I've joined. Um, and I've known these guys for about three years now. And uh, certainly, every, every Arton System that I've done in my practice, uh, I've done about 25, and we have not had one single failure, not of an implant nor of a prosthesis. I've got one case now that I have to add. Uh, we did um, two uh, posterior mandibular implants, and, and those implants will be ready to be loaded in the next uh, six weeks, so the team will be back with Volker to, to extend that bridge. Now, the team is, is really using this as a launch platform for, for what they're going to be doing here in the UK. And obviously, the intention is to, to get as many of you involved in, in, the, um, in the Arton system. And certainly, from our point of view, we want to try and get everyone in the UK to, to learn about it, to learn about our system and, and the implant that we use. So we do offer a mobile service to practices. We also offer courses, which you can come and see us at our, at our practices in, in, in London, in, in Tenerife, where the Arton system was born, and at my clinic in, in, in Soto Grande, which is on the Costa del Sol. So uh, we're happy to, to do courses and, and mentor you through and come and see you at, at your practices here in the UK, if need be, to, to help you through and, and, and get you familiar with, the, with what we do. And just uh, in brief, the cost structure. I don't really want to go into too much about that, but um, that is something that, that we can talk about uh, if you wanted to come and discuss at, at, at our little um, um, table at the back there. So um, I think that's, uh, I think that is. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Oh, thank you. Dr. Kabir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And there'll be time for questions. There's a drinks reception, I believe, starting outside very soon, uh, sponsored by Juvora and Porsche Cars. 
and, uh, and there are Porsche cars outside to have a try, but 